Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for watching. This is the Vandeverian Wager, formerly known as John's Wager, but that just wasn't a cool enough name, so I had to up the name. Uh, thank you for watching this. Um, what this is, we can trace this back to Pascal's Wager, uh, where the thinking comes from. This is a proof for the belief. It's not a proof for the existence of God, but it's a proof that you should believe in God, that it's reasonable and preferable to believe that God exists. And uh, this is really a complete overhaul and change of Pascal's wager, but the essential core of a decision theory based argument of a uh, of a wager based argument is it's still there. And also I got the idea for this argument after reading Pascal's wager and uh, then I came up with this. So uh, that's why it's, that's why it's uh, still the wager. First of all, let's talk about, oh, you can see the outline here. Well, I thank you all for watching, and I do again. We'll talk about problems with Pascal, correction for uh, a false dichotomy, infinite God's problem, no loss problem. We'll do some comparative religion, and then I tell you all thanks again and a few other things. So first of all, problems with Pascal. You know, here's a writing from Pascal that really sums up the heart of his argument. He said, let us weigh the gain and the loss in wagering that God is. Let us estimate these two chances. If you gain, you gain all. If you lose, you lose nothing. So there's three main problems with here, although I really do appreciate the main idea and creativity he had in coming up with this argument. I appreciate the idea and hopefully I've turned it into something a little bit more logically uh, tenable, but nonetheless there are three problems we need to address. One is the false dichotomy, there's the infinite God's problem, and the no loss problem. So what's the false dichotomy? Well he created a false dichotomy. He said, you either believe in the Christian God or you don't believe in God. He presumes the Christian God in his argument. Which is a false dichotomy. Um, so the proper dichotomy would be theism, believing in any God, versus agnosticism plus atheism. That is, either you believe in some God, or you don't believe in any God, or you proactively disbelieve in a God. Okay, so uh, you can see how agnosticism is not holding a belief, so you need to include that as well. I'm saying this very terribly, but I'm trying to hurry it because I've done this video three times now and each time it took several, like 20 or 30 minutes. So the way I'm going to address this is I'm going to have two layers. We're in a dual layer. And uh, first we're going to ask which God is a separate question. First we're going to ask which is true, atheism or theism or agnosticism. And we can go about this two ways depending on which you prefer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the argument. We can either assign a 33% chance to any of them. Uh, and treat agnosticism as a separate category, or we can assign a 50% chance to theism and a 50% chance to the combination of atheism and agnosticism. Um, so we're going to assume that they're all true, and then we're going to analyze our preference versus decision theory, and we're going to try and maximize our return on investment. So what we're going to do is, we're going to say, if this is true, what's the reward? And then we're going to multiply it by the likelihood that it's true. So if we're assuming they're all equally likely to be true, uh, I know it says assume they're all true or assume they're both true. We're actually going to assume they're equally likely to be true. So that's why I said we can either do the 50% or the 33%. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to end up multiplying that by the reward to get our uh, expected value, if you're familiar with decision theory. That's what investors do. You come up with your expected value. All right, so Correction for the infinite God's problem. First of all, he didn't have a working definition of God. He, uh, Pascal just presumed the Christian God. Here's my working definition of God. I'm not going to presume the Christian God. I do believe in the Christian God, but that is uh, a little more than this video can handle. So for now, let's just use this working definition. Any entity which, if its demands are met, can grant something infinite to the believer. And this is not the definition of, a go of the God. This is a definition of a God. You're only going to end up choosing one. You can only wager in one. But this is still a potential God, would be a more proper title for that definition. And a potential God, despite the apparently vague definition, has several qualities. It must have sufficient fathomability. That means it must be apparent to the believer. Okay. Uh, total fathomability means you know everything about the God. You can define it, write it down. You don't need that. Okay. There can be some mystery in this God, but it needs to be sufficiently fathomable. And uh, I'll do a video on fathomability. I was trying to do that video before this, but I got a lot of demands for this video, so I'll end up doing that as a follow-up video. But essentially it means you know enough about the God to do two things. One, discern it from other gods, 
and two, discern that it uh, meets the requirements of the definition of a god. So let's say, for example, you know there's this god, but you don't know what its standards are. Then that would not be a sufficiently fathomable god because it doesn't meet requirement two. Or rather, you don't know if it meets requirement two that you can meet such standards. If you're not aware of the standards, you don't know if you can meet its standards. So it's insufficiently fathomable. Uh, additionally, any god you've never heard of, made up gods and all these kinds of abstract things, they are all insufficiently fathomable. Uh, therefore, they would not meet this definition of a potential god, and this is how we solve the infinite gods problem. All of those theoretical possibilities of god are disregarded because they're insufficiently fathomable. In other words, in tr say this is a reasonable thing because of decision theory and investment theory and all that, you wouldn't invest in a stock that, one, you didn't know existed, or two, even if you knew it existed, you didn't know anything else about it, you would not invest in that stock. That would be an unreasonable and illogical thing, especially in light of the fact that there may be other stocks which you know a lot about and that have very potential re uh, positive rewards, which is requirement number three. So uh, uh, that's sufficient fathomability. You also must be able to meet its demands. You're not going to um, believe in that God, which is only going to grant you uh, all its infinite rewards and stuff, only if you have Down syndrome and you are quite aware that you do not have Down syndrome, you wouldn't want to believe in that God because it's impossible for you to fulfill that. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, furthermore, not only would you not want to invest in that God, even if there was a God that you were 99% sure you could fulfill its desires, perhaps there's a God that all you have to do is run a quarter mile and you get all its returns, all its rewards. If you knew that there was another God that you were a 100% chance of getting, you still wouldn't want to invest in the 99% one because 100% is greatly less risky and a better investment than the 99% one. So you can see how we're still using the um, decision theory and all that kind of stuff in this argument. Uh, third, the God must be able to grant a positive infinite reward. Let's say there's a very easy God. All you got to do is just say, I believe in you, and you get absolutely nothing. That would be completely worthless believing it. You need a positive infinite reward, or you might as well be an atheist or an agnostic, because uh, that's how much they're going to get in the afterlife anyway. Well, I'll address that a little more in a little more sophisticated detail in a minute, but can you see what I'm saying there? Okay. Uh, comparative religion analysis. So now we're on a very short and finite list. Um, risk management and decision theory, as I pointed out, has a natural preference for a doctrine of justification by faith alone. What this means is just the doctrine of justification by faith alone is held by uh, really two religions. And it means if you believe in our God, that's all you got to do, and you get it. If you just say you believe in our God, that's all you got to do. Uh, this is opposed to a doctrine of justification by works, uh, things like this. So what this, the reason there's a natural preference for this is because it eliminates requirement two. Uh, in other words, just by virtue of being sufficiently, of the God being sufficiently fathomable, and by virtue of you choosing them, you've already fulfilled the requirement that you meet its demands. So it's a lot less risky, uh, you're managing your risk better, and it's a lot better of a decision theory. Uh, so there's only two religions like this that I'm aware of, Islam and Christianity. And even if there are others, I'm certain they're not very numerous. Um, this is economically logical. We can see Islam and Christianity are the two world's largest religions. It seems like these people are, are a market of information. They're operating on efficient information. And so we can see that these two being the largest religions is consistent with my argument. So that's supporting evidence. This is not an ar argument ad populum. This is an appeal to economic market theory. So I'm not just saying people believe it, therefore it's true. I'm saying people are acting on efficient information and have decided that it is the best investment and therefore that lends credibility to it. Okay, 50% chance we meet again. We are now at Islam or Christianity. It's different from Pascal's 50-50 where he said Christianity or not Christianity. I'm saying Christianity or Islam. For the reasons I mentioned above, Islam is a very untenable religion. Uh, we can continue on with that economic argument and Christianity is larger than Islam, but I'll give you some other reasons. Go watch my video, Mormonism and Christianity in three minutes. Uh, all of the principles which I address with regard to Mormonism also apply to Islam because they're both essentially Christian offshoots. 
Uh, and you can also go rep, you know, research it on the internet. There's plenty of information around. So the one objection that might undo this is, um, what if God wants us not to believe in him? Or what if we somehow get an eternal reward for not believing in God? You can see how if you get an eternal reward for being an atheist, then it really makes no difference, right? Well, but there's several uh, problems with this. One is the problem of precedent. Um, if I believe in uh, God A for 10,000 years, and there's lots of historical pre precedent that uh, people agree that it's a plausible idea, and then all of a sudden I make up a new idea, let's say uh, I make up God B, then that's not a very uh, tenable position just due to the virtue of precedent. Okay, maybe you don't buy that. I don't really care. You can go read Edmund Burke. He says he talks about precedent a lot better than I do. Uh, let's talk about evidence. There are tidbits of evidence for various religions scattered around for various claims various religions make. And uh, the more popular religions, that is Islam and Christianity and, and things like that, have even more evidence in favor of them. And I would say Christianity has the most favor of it of any religion. And that's not to say that every claim it makes is completely evidenced. In fact, a lot of its claims are yet to be uh, even possibly evidenced. But that's not the point. The point is, there is no evidence for the claim what if God wants us not to believe in Him? There's no evidence for the claim, what if we somehow get an eternal reward for not believing in God? There's no evidence that anyone has ever not believed in God and had eternal life. In fact, that would be a very difficult and odd thing to be able to evidence. Uh, but, and what I'm not claiming is that an absence of evidence is an evidence of absence. I'm not making that very silly claim. What I'm claiming is, if there's evidence for religions, and there's no evidence for this claim, then religions are more reasonable and uh, rational to choose than this claim. That's what I'm saying. Now, I do acknowledge that this is a logical uh, possibility that this is true, a theoretical possibility, but the question of its likelihood is very uh, bad. You see, this goes, this is a violation of the potential God rules. You're comparing um, something which has not gone through the infinite to finite regress. So this question belongs in the question of infinite gods. It's really a chance, one in infinity, that this is true. Uh, because um, you're comparing apples and oranges. You see what I'm saying? The potential gods filter, uh, the potential god rules, takes all the infinite gods and turns it into a finite number. And that's the reason this argument is successful. But this claim does not go through that filter accurately. In other words, it doesn't pass the filter, so this claim belongs uh, in an argument that the filter has not been applied. It belongs in an argument where there's an infinite number of gods. And uh, the chance of that, one divided by infinity, is zero anyway. So um, it's a logical possibility, but it's extremely unlikely, no evidence for it, no precedent for it, and it essentially is comparing apples and oranges. So thanks again for watching, whether or not you agree. Uh, constructive feedback is very welcome. I know this argument isn't perfect. It's only my second iteration of the argument, but I think it's pretty, pretty strong, but not perfect. Please like, sub, share, uh, any of that. My, philosophy, my channel, I do philosophy, religion, uh, politics, and a lot of music. So if any of those sound appealing, check it out, or sub anyway, even if you didn't like this video. I'd appreciate that. And also, I'm very responsive to comments, uh, requests for debates and discussions, whether by messaging or video. Uh, if you post a video reply, I'll most likely uh, approve it, unless you just cuss the whole time or something like that. So anyway, thanks for watching again, and take care.